I would like to actually introduce our presenters first. Uh, I would like to start with Dr. Marianne Barisevich. She has a PhD from Rutgers University. Uh, she, her area of expertise is uh, anatomy and physiology, as far as I know. And she is the <coughs> department head of science and engineering at RBCC. Uh, we are working very closely with her together for, for this program to, you know, uh, uh, work and, and, and be, be beneficial for our students. And another presenter is our dear program coordinator, Ms. Joanne Travaglini. Uh, she is the uh, RVCC program manager and she is managing all the academies, the WOTEC here and the one in Woodbridge. Um, she is a great help. She is the one who is arranging all the structure for us. And then, you know, she is, she is uh, arranging all kinds of schedules, you know, uh, the orientations mm -hmm. and everything. She is, she's an amazing person to work with. Um, they're gonna be doing the presentation mainly today and I'm gonna plug in mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have additional questions. And we have Pragnia here. Pragnia has started our uh, academy program two years ago. She is one of the uh, top students in the class, and, and she is doing really well. She is studying so hard. So uh, when when I emailed you guys about this program, actually, I never thought about her bringing her here. So when I was just talking to Joanne, Joanne said, "Why don't we get one student from from the previous batch, and 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 let the parents hear about her experiences?" So um, we are gonna start off the program with her experiences and then we are gonna go ahead with Dr. Uh, Marianne and, and Joanne. So with your applause. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys know, my name is Pregnia Arapa. I'm from 10th grade and I'm one of the first people to graduate from Teeks as a high school student. And you might be wondering how this program actually helped me. It actually transformed me in many ways, though it's only been two years. And one of the best ways it actually transformed me was it increased my intellectual <coughs> abilities. It challenged me, and that challenge and the amount of competition against my peers has helped me improve. It was something that instigated me to become a better person. And also, since it's actually a small classroom, we also get specialized attention. So one good thing about being in this program is that as a student, I'm not afraid to ask my teachers about questions that I have. So any disclarity that I don't really know about, for example, if I have a question about biology or psychology with my professors, I'm still able to approach them because it's a small class and I have specialized attention. And in the aspect of maturity, I've grown to realize the value of every single person surrounding me, my teachers, my parents, my peers, and some are good influences, some are bad influences, but you have to look at the good side and see the light. And it, this program really helped me with understanding how you have to look into the light even though there are some times, for example, if I don't get a good grade, I, I usually am feeling bad, but I always look, how should I improve my grade? How can I actually become a better person? So that was one of the major aspects. And time management is one of the major aspects that you have to have throughout your life. Not just high school, not just college, but when you go and go into jobs, when you actually get a job where your child gets a job, time management and being on time is very imperative for a person's success. So with all the extracurricular activities I have and also academics, it was very critical for me to learn how to manage my time so I could find the right equilibrium between myself and the amount of time I have to spend between myself and the amount of time I can spend with my family and the amount of time I have to spend with academics. So it, w it was really hard to find the first year, but starting off the second year, I was able to go through the first quarter with a breeze. And apart from studies, extracurricular activities is also really important. For instance, last year I was part of the first um, uh, robotics competition and our team went to um, the world championships and got 10th place. And doing that 
for that achievement to actually be like received, we had to work night and day, every single day, but we also had to focus on our academics too. So that was very imperative. So time management there was really, really important for me. That period of time last year was really, really important. And going on, one of the main things um, in my perspective that I feel is really beneficial about this program is that it's a setup of how a college environment wor works. So my feeling is that when I'm going to college and amongst my peers that I'll meet there, I'll feel more confident because I know that I've been in a college environment, know how to interact with professors, know how this actually goes. So this will actually help me much more in college. I might struggle the first year, I might struggle the second year, but going on third and fourth, I'll get adapted to this environment. Also, this program, I know that many uh, parents have questions, is it too hard for my child or is it too challenging? The best answer that I can actually come up with right now is that if a person has passion and if a person actually feels that this is not a burden but this is a goal someone has to achieve, then it won't be a challenge, trust me. And you'll always put the amount of effort you need into and always achieve your goal for this program because this program actually makes you a better person, not only in academics but in also your character. Talking about the professors, the professors are very approachable and they also have a really good background. Um, majority of the professors are Rutgers graduates. Regardless, they're really, really good at teaching being approachable and actually so there are many ways that you can actually approach a professor but like even if you email them they'll always respond to you within that day or maybe tomorrow morning so you can always rely on the professors to re respond to you um and also about the campus classes the campus classes are really interactive and really well placed because we have time when we go to the campus to explore it, and the campus has so many resources that we can utilize. For example, we, the campus has a library, and there are many books in there that you can actually read and borrow. That was one of my favorite places on the campus so far. And also, there are lab rooms and the lunch room, and those are all, there are various um, buildings in the campus itself but we mainly are uh, going to the biology, science and engineering building this year because we have AP biology going to the campus. So moving on, there is a lot of work and I'm not gonna lie about it, but you have to find the balance as I said before. <laughs> so <laughs> there are a lot of projects, there are, and especially if you're working and having a lot of um, extracurricular endeavors, it's going to be difficult to maintain your grade. But if you have the amount of passion and if you feel that zeal to actually achieve that goal, you'll be able to do it regardless of what anyone says. Thank you. Thank you, Parmia. That was wonderful. You did an excellent job. Okay, so we're starting here talking about what exactly is the Environmental Science Academy. Um, it is a four. Uh, it is a four-year um, program for highly focused college-bound students. The honors part of this program comes in the high school part of the program. It's not a college honors program, but it, that's, the, that's the, the high school part of the program. But it is a four-year uh, program. It's rigorous, as you heard the students say, and it is for college-bound students. And it's, 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 again, it's highly focused. It is a partnership program between TEKS and RVCC. We do a lot together. We collaborate together. We have monthly meetings together. We're all trying to make this program, um, you know, evolve into the best program that it can be. It's a, it's a good program now, but we continually work to make sure that the program and the students are, are successful. Um, the successful students will graduate with an associate degree in environmental science. It's an AS, it's an AS degree, Associate of Science degree in environmental science. 
Okay. Why would a student want to be in the um, Environmental Science Academy? So as, again, as you heard, it's a rigorous curriculum. It combines honors courses, which are high school courses, with AP courses, and also college courses, RVCC college courses. It is a small learning environment, and I think Pragnia touched on that a little bit when she was talking about you know, being together with um, the students um, in, in that smaller environment. We, we have found that students who are in a small learning environment, in a cohort model, which means that the students will move from class to class to class together. They're not going to be separated. They're going to stay together, for, for better or for worse. Um, they will be in a small learning environment, and that will help them um, with some friendly competition, with like learning together, with you know just having that good rapport with each other. And I think that that's the next yeah, developing supportive rapport they actually um, become like a family together because they are helping each other, they're learning together. It's a good environment for them. It's a very positive, supportive environment. Uh, high quality faculty, we have high quality faculty on the high school side. You, you have it on the high school side. Um, we do have, right now, we do have one professor, uh, one teacher who is qualified to teach our course in the ninth grade, uh, but we have Right now, we also have all RVCC faculty teaching in the 10th grade, and then as the program goes on in 11th grade and 12th grade. So we have very high quality faculty teaching the courses. Uh, it prepares students well for college level work. Um, the college, college classes that they're doing now are college level, but beyond when they transfer, to their four-year institution, it's going to prepare them well. They're going to know how, and again, this Prognia touched on that, they're going to know how to speak to professors. They're going to know all about college-level exams. They're going to know about um, labs, especially in the sciences, how to be in a lab, how to you know do lab work, how to do lab presentations, how to do lab um, any kinds of lab reporting that they need to do. So this is a this is a very good preparation for college level work. And again, leading into that, it teaches organizational skills, work ethic, all the things that you need in order to uh, be a good college student. Because you're not just in a high school class. You're not just in an AP class. You, you need to be able to develop critical thinking skills and all of those skills in order to do, uh, be successful in the college level work that the students are being presented with. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll take over a little bit here. So I wanna talk a little bit specifically about the Environmental Science Academy student qualities, what we would expect to see from students that are going to get accepted into this program. First things first, they need to maintain their GPA. So um, academic rigor is going to play a big role in this. How devoted are they? How disciplined are they to their studies and to maintaining that strong GPA? How focused are they? We need these students to be tremendously focused. And Pradnia spoke a lot about passion. We would really love to see passionate students in the sciences, someone who really truly feels like this is the direction that they're going to go into when they get into their four-year school. <clears throat> There does have to be a level of maturity, especially because we're gonna be interacting with college level, which could range in age. We have a very diverse population of ages at the campus. So we do need to exhibit some level of maturity and ability to handle things. Take charge, um, advocate for yourself, especially on the college campus. Time management and study skills are huge for any student, even at the high school level, right? There is a schedule, start time, stop time, catching the bus. Uh, making sure that your assignments are turned in on time and that you budget appropriate study time and project time. As I mentioned a moment ago, we really need to have that passion and strong interest in a science. So STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, we really want your student to feel passionate about those subjects. They should have a strong desire to do research. We do include a capstone course in this program um, and it is research based so we need students to understand how to go through inquiry based learning how to uh, distinguish information literacy and science literacy 
on their own, how they can use resources and use databases to get these um, research opportunities. And finally, we want to see a commitment to community engagement. RBCC is huge about service to the community, which is one of the reasons that we are partnering here with TEKS. So we do want students to realize the benefit of being a part of a larger community and how to give back and how to provide service in that way. Um, the next one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here is the curriculum for the Environmental Science Academy. The ninth and tenth grade schedule are here, and I'll flip over to the eleventh and twelfth. Your ninth grade schedule is all on Teeks property. Um, your tenth grade is all on Teeks property, and this doesn't look probably very different from a typical high school curriculum. We worked very closely with Mr. Robert and Mrs. Ghosh to make sure that there was alignment so that your students are getting all of their high school requirements over the four years and all of the AS requirements over the four years. So it took a little bit of uh, puzzle piecing things together, but it really worked out. So um, what do they have? Uh, for their ninth grade, the first class that they're gonna have that is college level is a computer science course. <clears throat> Once they get into the 10th grade, they're gonna have a history course here on campus, but it's college level, taught by a college professor, um, and intro to sociology on this campus. Their first STEM course is gonna be pre-calc. So you might kind of be wondering why they have computer literacy, history, and sociology as a college level course, and why it can't just be a high school course. For every college program in the state of New Jersey and, and nationally for the most part, you do have to have a certain number of credits that are general education. So these are general education credits. These are, you know, English, humanity, sociology, um, computer literacy. These are all pro classes that you're going to have to take that in the state of New Jersey, they pretty much go wherever you have to go. They're, you know, your, your gen eds. Once we get into the 11th grade, you're gonna see a lot more happening. Anytime you see something bolded on these charts, that means the students are coming to RBCC campus. So in the 11th grade, they're coming onto campus for Gen Bio 1 and Gen Bio 2, and Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2. One of the nice things about this program is your students um, already got a little bit of this they already had honors bio in ninth grade. I think that the 11th grade is the first time they get the chemistry. So this program actually sets them up really nicely to do well with that transition into the 11th grade onto campus. In the 12th grade, most of their classes are going to be on campus. So by the time they are 12th graders at the high school, they're pretty much college students. So they're getting their English done on campus. Environmental Science 102, which is a sustainability um, course, Energy, the environment, which is another uh, sustainability course. Geology, stats, uh, statistics, applied research, geography, and general ecology. So this is a really rigorous, really up and coming current year for your students. Um, it's a really unique opportunity that 12th grade year that I, I'm especially excited about and the department at RBCC is really excited about because it's really allowing the students to experience more than just the college environment, but really experience STEM at its growth, because this is an area that's really exploding right now, I think. Okay, so some particulars about the program, some details that you should know. Um, Accuplacer testing. So there is an Accuplacer test. It's a computerized um, test that uh, the students will have to take in order to take the pre-calculus that you saw um, in the 10th grade and also to take the sociology in the 10th grade as well. So there's a math portion and there's an English portion. portion. So um, Mr. Robert and I will work closely together, we'll plan the, the Accuplacer testing for them, but that is a prerequisite. And the students will have more than one opportunity to take the test and to place uh, there's no pass-fail, but they will have the opportunity to place into the course courses um, that they have to place into with Accuplacer testing. Um, attendance, um, as far as attendance goes, what I, what I wanted to just mention here just briefly is for RVCC courses, when we have RVCC courses, even if they're on this campus, um, they will go by the RVCC schedule. So if this, if RVCC is 
um, open, well, not necessarily on this campus, but if RVCC, if you, if you have an RVCC professor um, and they're coming to this campus um, and we don't start until, you know, whatever it is, the date in the beginning of the school year, we start later than you, or we have a longer break in the middle of the year, which we do, it'll go by our RVCC schedule. Also, when you are on our campus, if you have a day off here for the high school, but RVCC is open, you would still be coming to RVCC for your classes. So that's just a general overview. I know this is a lot of information for you, but you know, as you get more acclimated and as you apply to the program, hopefully you'll you know, get more information about this. Uh, transportation. Robert, maybe you want to jump in on transportation, the busing? For the transportation, uh, if the kids are on the bus, they come to the campus here. Uh, usually what they do, they go to their class in the morning, they have one or two classes, and then we bus them from here to the campus, and then we pick them up from there to here, and then they catch the district bus here, and then they go home. So you don't have to uh, get them from the campus. So they're gonna be here, the meeting point, is gonna be always the school. Okay, and then as the, that, that's especially in the, in the beginning, but as the courses, as they become more on the RVCC campus, they'll be there more and more. So they'll stay for longer periods of time and for more days of the week. Um, grades, the students will be given grades by the professors. Uh, the grades will go on a transcript, on an RVCC transcript, and they will use that transcript when they are applying to, co to their four-year colleges. Uh, the grades will not be numerical grades. We give uh, letter grades when we are giving grades. The professors do not give numerical grades. So it's A, B+, plus, B, we don't give minus grades. So that's what we do, and we give them on a transcript, and then you would submit your transcript as you're applying. And again, that's a long time away, but just wanted to mention that to you. And textbooks, um, I believe that the textbooks are going to be- We are taking care of the textbooks here. Taking the care side. of, yep, yeah. by the school. So far, that's what we did. Yes, so that's something just to mention as well, just another little program detail. Okay. So additional opportunities. Go ahead, Marianne. Okay, good. This is you and I. Okay. So um, yeah, I'll start off with this. Um, one of the great things about the fact that your students get to come to campus is they get to participate as college students. We do have wonderful support services and resources, as we heard earlier today. We have an academic support center that is full of tutors and workstations and textbooks and manipulatives and models and all types of uh, software programs. We have a career and transfer service office that's open daily, um, which is a wonderful resource. We do have a full library. It's a great library, um, off also with private study rooms and um, textbooks as well for, uh, what is that called? Not borrowing. Reference. Reference? No, where you can like check it out just for like two hours. You can't take it out, but you can sit there and oh, do the textbook. Yeah. Um, we have an athletic center, we have a full gym with a uh, fitness center and workout and treadmill, we have a pool. Um, yeah. Summer courses is a huge thing that I wanted to talk with you folks about. So you might, your student might be in the program for two years and maybe in the 11th grade they take Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2. And your students realize, wow, I really like chemistry and I would really love to do something with chemistry and go into a chemistry program later. Well. This program, the ESA, already has Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2 in it, but maybe you want to explore more with organic chemistry, which is a 200 level class, not in the program. You have the opportunity to take these courses in the summer if you'd like. Our courses, our summer courses start in May. We have daytime, we have evening courses, so it could even work out well with your school schedule. They start in May um, and they run through late August, like August 17th or 18th. And you could bang out Organic Chemistry 1 and Organic, organic Chemistry 2 in the summer. And that's even more you get to add to your what transcript. What about anatomy and physiology? Absolutely. We offer that in the summer. Um, we offer anatomy and physiology all over the place. You could take anatomy and physiology on Saturdays during the school year, in any evening during the school year if that's what you want to do. Let's say you're really interested in genetics. Maybe you want to take genetics in the fall semester in an evening when we offer it. Actually, genetics is spring semester. Um, 
maybe you decide you want to try physics. Um, and we have a, a myriad of physics courses you could take in the summer, or you want to try an engineering course in the summer. So as a college student, they get to go ahead and enroll in these courses as well. You have to pay summer tuition fees, but these are options for them. Yeah. So one thing I would add to that, just to add to that, is we're looking for you to do those like junior year. Yeah and senior year. Once you because, kind of experience yeah, it. We, we need you to experience your ninth grade and your and your tenth grade. Um, there are maybe some other, maybe a little bit lighter classes, because a lot of these courses that um, Marianne is mentioning um, will have prereqs anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might want to take something, if you really, really want to take a, a summer course after ninth grade or tenth grade, maybe there's uh, you know some, some other choice, right? some gen ed type course that you can take. Um, but once you get into the 11th grade and you've established a good GPA, we know that you're, you know, working well in the program, um, then, you know, these other, these other courses would be open to you. And maybe even during the, um, the course, the, the, uh, the course of the year, you might even want to add on a yeah, course. You can add a communications yeah. course if you want to prepare how right. to get ready for your college interviews. You know, you have a lot of options. Um, internships, research, and recommendations. These are uh, all kind of student specific, faculty specific, but there are opportunities if you wanted to try to reach out to someone for an internship or for a research opportunity. We do have those opportunities available for students that really self-identify and really pursue them um, later on in their academic career. And of course, tons of clubs and student government. I hope that by the time the students are on campus in their G uh, senior year, perhaps the junior year, they're on campus at least a Tuesday or a Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock, we have what's known as college hour. And that's a time that is set aside. There are no academic classes scheduled whatsoever. It is a time to participate in clubs, student government, service learning, um, and act as all different types of programs that are extracurricular that we would like to welcome the TEAC students to join can I, our regular can I add population. One, one thing. Um, so, Right now, our 10th grade students are going on campus to mm -hmm. RDCC. Um, they are taking a biology course, and, and some of them are extremely well in biology, and the professor likes the student, students so much. So this set of students, they approached their professors, and they said, like, you know, we want to do something over the summer at Rutgers, you know, I'm interested in this and that. Uh, can you just recommend us for, for some research opportunities. Now they're working on it together. There you go. Great. So she referred, she's going to refer them to some professors at Rutgers. Usually this is something very difficult to do. You yeah. know, as a high school student, you can not always get into some research opportunities at Rutgers. Right. But through your professors, you know, right. with their recommendations, it's becoming very, very easy. And you know, yes. another thing, we, as a professor, we get emails all the time about summer opportunities and right. internships and things. And now your students are going to be college students, so they get to participate in these too. Yeah. So it's a really wonderful opportunity for them all. Definitely a benefit of being on campus and having access to professors. Um, there's a lot of connections that can be right. made. And as, as Mar Aunt Marianne said, it's, it's a case by case, and it's something that you know your student or students who are in the, um, the audience here, you would need to, you know, ask about it but that's a great example mm -hmm. and from a college admissions perspective mm -hmm. uh, it's it's good to get a recommendation yes. letter from from your teacher it's, it's good it's, there's nothing bad about it but if you get it from your professor it's, it's always different right yes you know, getting a recommendation letter from a professor and it's different once you go to your four-year school because i remember yeah. trying to get recommendations in a lecture <laughs> full of 500 people your professor doesn't know you. That's right. You know, at this point, your professor yeah. has you and 15 other people. They know you very well. Right. And that is the beauty of the, the small learning environment that go back to and go back to some of uh, Pragmia's com comments that she made. Uh, your professors will know you very well. And, maybe too well. Uh, maybe too well. <laughs> yeah. The students are always asking for recommendations. But that also goes back to maturity and work ethic and doing what, you know, mm -hmm you need to do in the classroom to get those recommendations. So just, you know, a little thought ahead. Okay, so let's move on here. You're being also quiet. I know you're gonna have a lot of questions. Okay, so admission requirements for the program. We are looking for a 3.5 and above GPA for your seventh and eighth grade um, GPA. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Robert has put into effect a teacher nomination, so we're looking for at least two out of four teacher nominations from the four major subjects, academic subjects here. Good attendance, of course, and a good discipline record. Um, here's this word AccuPlacer again. So we do have an AccuPlacer test that we'll, uh, we'll be giving you as a benchmark just to see where you are. It won't count as placement, which is what I was talking about before for math and English. It is math and English, but it'll just be a benchmark to see where, where you are, um, you know, in, in terms of where your knowledge is at this point. And then we also do an interview for all the students who apply and are at that benchmark level that we're looking for. And here is the application process. So you're going to submit your application, which there is an application form. Um, <clears throat> and that we're going to submit by December 14th. Uh, you're going to take that benchmark AccuPlacer test and that in my notes here. So we're going to do that probably in January. Uh, and then the interview with Teeks and RVCC staff, um, Mr. Robert and I have been doing all the interviews, probably will be in February after we get the results of that first AccuPlacer test for you. And then wait for your decision. Well, that's a hard one. But by, probably by the end of March is when you'll have a decision as to whether or not you've been accepted into the program. Okay, the tuition and fees, you can take a look at this. Uh, this seems maybe a little bit compl complicated, but uh, it's what it's doing, it's, it's laying out the location of the courses and the tuition and fees. Um, the fees would be waived for anything at the, at the uh, high school location if it was a lab fee, but the fees that are incurred are these other fees Overall fees waived are application fee and graduation fee. Uh, in your folders, there is a tuition uh, calculator. So you can see for the number of credits that you're taking per semester, which the curriculum sheet shows you the number of uh, courses and um, the number of credits that you would be taking each semester. You can actually use this to figure out the, um, the tuition per semester. Uh, the only thing that this doesn't include are the lab fees because that's considered a special, a special uh, course fee. And the lab fees are, again, um, between uh, 60 and $360. And I think most of them are around 80 or so dollars um, for the, the labs. But I'm not quite exactly sure. But I think for the labs that you would be taking, I don't know that they would range up to $360, but we could certainly find that out for you. Okay. So this is our last slide. Lastly, thank you for adding that, Robert. <laughs> uh, for folders, again, I have the tuition. We put the tuition in there. We put the curriculum sheet in there so you could actually uh, review that again so you would see the courses, the credits. Uh, where you would be freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year. And I think that's really it at this point, except uh, we would like to take some uh, questions and answers from you. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. Yes? When they're uh, spending more time on the RBCC campus in the 11th and 12th grades, I know in the earlier years, the pickup point, the meeting point will always be here, but will it change in those final two years because there's no. spending more time there? No, it's, it's, it's never gonna change. Okay. We're, we're gonna always, but I mean, we will always try to schedule it within the school time. So they're gonna come here, we're gonna bust them there, and then we're gonna bring them back okay. uh, by the dismissal time. That's always how we schedule, but if the classes get more, yeah. Uh, again, you know, we are going to work on the transportation. We are going to do our best uh, so that you're not going to be like going to the campus and picking them up. Well, that, that. that would be the main problem. Yes. If you have two full time working parents right. out of yeah. the neighborhood. Yes. That's and yes. besides, in 12th grade, they, they get their driver's license. Yeah. There's always, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. We well, do. 
Yeah. It's something to keep in mind. Yeah. You know, I want the student side though. <laughs> yeah. No, they do like driving to campus when they uh, get old enough. So. Yeah. Anybody else? That's when the struggle starts. In the back? Yeah. Can you, looking at the tuition fees, it's yeah. not clear one whole year how much roughly. So what's like the max outflow? 14000 We calculated it last year for, for our students. Yeah. The max is going to be $14,000. Yeah. For four years. For four years. The total is going to come down to $14,000. You mean all four years? All four years, everything included. Yes. That's going to be the maximum, yeah. yeah. Do you have an approximate date when the placement will be? So I'm, after this presentation, tomorrow you're going to receive uh, the, the application package from me. I'm going to email that to you. And uh, in the meanwhile, when you're filling out the application form, we are going to come up with the Accuplacer date. Yeah. Uh, we are planning it to be about January. 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 Because, so, yeah, the applications are due December 14th, so yeah. once we get them all. Yes, once we get the results, then we are going to start the interviews. But by, by March, I think we are going to be done with everything. Yeah. Regarding the actual place of test, can you advise how we prepare the students for it? Um, I, I can send a book uh, tomorrow in my email. So, you know, where you can get an idea about what, what the accumulator test is. And I'm also working on something different. Uh, actually, this accumulator test is not going to be the right. only factor for us to determine <coughs> because we know that these students, in their current situation, they cannot place. We know that for sure. I mean, we had some rare cases mm -hmm. two years ago where the students took the test and placed right away. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it was only one or two students. So, you know, in case that they cannot place in Accuplacer, and, you know, we divide them into two different categories because the Accuplacer test is, is, is two sections one is math and one is English. In our experiences, English is improved automatically. In ninth grade, they just they just place into the college level. There's no problem. The only thing that they have to work on is is the math section. Yeah. And I got an expert on it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, throughout uh, the two years that we experienced, uh, I know what they need, and and I'm providing the services for them. For example, they have after school tutoring because for the students who scored low, for for instance, I have after school tutoring for them. Saturday tutoring, and I give the book uh, to the teachers, to the math teachers. Uh, when they have time in the class, they're going over the occupation math. So we, we make sure that when they, you know, they, they, they're gonna take the test, they can take it only three times. Right. Let's say first time they couldn't place, second time they couldn't place. Um, I wait for the third time towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. like May. So by that time, usually the students, when they take the test, they pass because right. they get all the knowledge. You know, they learn Algebra 1. If they didn't take Algebra 1, they learn Algebra 1 and Geometry <laughs> over the summer and, and, and Algebra 2, you know? So because we have some cases, sometimes this batch, sorry, sometimes uh, the students that we have in the program are not our students only. You know, they're coming from other schools and they come without even Algebra 1. So I put them in a different class. I merge uh, you know, Algebra 1 with Geometry over the summer. I make them take the, uh, the Algebra 2, two. Algebra two right. and then they take the Accuplacer test. So we have different ways uh, to prepare them. So if they don't place at first, don't be shocked. Right. It's very normal. And remember, they won't be taking their placement Accuplacer until sometime in the ninth grade um, and then they'll have other opportunities after that first time so this time you don't have to worry so much about accuplacer remember i said that was just a, you know a benchmark and it was really just for um recruitment and for the application purposes yeah. this this, this accuplacer time. that you're going to take 
So don't get too nervous about yeah, that. Yeah, the reason why they need acuplacer is actually for this course. Right, uh, that's for what I was going to So they're going to pass the English yeah. section or place in the yeah. English section so Spanish. that they can take history and, social, yeah. and, and sociology yeah. here. And, there's the and, and they have to place in the pre-calc level so that they can take pre-calc one and two. So until 10th grade, they still have time. And, and uh, Joanne sent, hooked me up with a guy who is, who is working on the acuplacer. Yes. Uh, so we are planning to get the acuplacer test for our school so that they can practice here in the school until they, they take the real one. So we are going to try all, all, all sorts of stuff here in the school so that they can place in the college level. Yes, sir. Um, on the ninth grade curriculum, it says um, honors algebra two. Right. So on the acupuncture test to, uh, to get into the actual academy, is algebra two going to be tested? Yes, it's going to be tested. And probably uh, most of the students, they're not going to be able to place because you didn't learn. Right? So that's why no. you're not going to be penalized. Don't worry for about it. it, though. Yeah, so you don't, you don't have to worry about no. it. We are going to prepare you first, and then we are going to give you the exam. So don't worry about it. So if they do OK right now, OK, yeah. Let's just assume that. Yes. Let's assume it, yeah. Let's assume that. If they make it into this program in ninth grade, are they uh, confirmed to go through? Of course, keeping the grade, whatever level that you need to keep, that part. But are they confirmed to go through to the 12th in this program? Or is there another yes, exam or acuplacer? Only acuplacer the only acuplacer, yeah. So once they pass the acuplacer or once they pass the acuplacer, once they One time. Do, there is no, we don't call it passive, but once they place in acuplacer, they're going to take and then they have the to place. keep, you mentioned the GPA. The GPA, yeah. of yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, have and sure. attendance and keeping their grades up, which will, that's, a, that's really part of the GPA. But if the student starts to, you know, flounder a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Grades, but this is something that we have already, you know, we deal with. Yeah, we, I mean, usually <laughs> what happens uh, when they deal with the professors, professors do not post the grades uh, on our database system. But when the students are in, you know, in, in a dangerous area, if they're failing or if they're close to failing, they send us an email. They say that, look, this student is not going on the right path. Then, then we step in and we just, we just try to correct the situation. Just, just so you know how connected we are, yeah. the academy students were late one day and the professor was in my office within like five minutes wanting to know where her students were and why they were late. So we keep on these students. We, if there's any type of slipping, we get on. No, every single day when I come to my office, when I get my coffee, first thing that I do, I go to the database, I check all the academy students' grades and see if they're missing an assignment, if they're, if they're failing, if their score is worse than yesterday. You know, this is what I, what I do. And, and I'm, on, I'm on them. Like, I page them a lot. The students hear their names all the time. So if, they, if, they, if I feel like there is something going on, we definitely step in and yeah. we make sure that the students are on track. Yeah, this is part of the strong partnership that yeah. schools have to have. Um, I get information from professors. I will give it to uh, Mr. Robert. The professors who are teaching here, it's easy for him to just have communication I with see them. them all, all, he sees all the them time. all the time. But as they move on campus, then I'm, I'm more the, um, the lead person with the professors as they will move onto the campus. And then I will talk to um, the guidance counselors at the schools here, Mr. Robert. And then, you know, if we, if we need to bring parents, you know, into the picture, he would be the one to do that. But at no time are parents supposed to be uh, communicating with professors. Students, we encourage you to talk to your professors all the time. That's what you should be doing, advocating for yourself, as uh, Mary Ann said. And they're learning very fast. And they fast, learn yeah. that fast. Yeah, that's yeah. the way it is, because I think the college environment, it's easy to pick that up in the college environment. You got a question over here? I, uh, just to dovetail on what he was saying, to be perfectly clear, this is what I'm hearing. If they get into the program ninth grade, they keep their GPA. As long as they keep that, they'll never lose their seat. There's no way they get bumped no. later on. Right. That's right. Right. But if they lose it, then make sure that they're dropped out of the program. Right. We, we, we definitely, we are, we are very careful with that because 
if a student is, is going down, usually that student is not the only one going down. It's bringing the others down too, so we make sure that uh, we usually like cut them off from the program in the second quarter. Okay. Um, you said that there was an interview and then there was a decision making. So um, is there a, uh, what is the ratio of acceptance? Usually, uh, as I, as I, as we mentioned in, in the slides, uh, I have sent an email out to the teachers. They nominated. So I already know who is going to be getting in and who is not going to be getting in. Um, I know the students well. I've been tracking them for a long time. But I also got the teachers' feedbacks. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a clear idea. This is more for the students who are coming from outside. Because you know next year we're going to have a lot of students transferring from other schools into our school. Um, so that's when we are going to be like really, you know, careful with the interviews and, and everything. And uh, there is so many students, uh, there's how many? In like 40, 46 students in, uh, in, in our eighth grade class. And only, I would say, 15 to 16 students were nominated for this. Uh, is there a maximum number of seats? For the program? We try to keep it as small as 20. 20, so you didn't even max out. We will. That, we will I, I know later. that we will because we are going to have about 15 from the school and we are going to have another influx, influx from outside. Yeah. Because now uh, we are also working with other schools closely, the middle schools, so we are going to have a lot of students. I heard that. So they will co-mingle with other people high schools that are running the same program is that no. No? no no well you said you're working with other schools no we are working with other middle middle schools okay. so which doesn't have high schools just to pull them oh, to you know for recruitment purposes so as they come over. yeah that's right. that's how they know yeah so like the, the center row there's a school right like, so yeah right so we are we are we are in touch with with so many schools right and we you know, when we started this program, we are usually getting the best students from the community. That's one thing about this program. It, like, we are getting to be like a mag magnet school. In, 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 and this is in, a great time to get yeah. into it because I can see it's going to continue it, to it, grow and yeah. become more competitive yes. as you reach uh, out. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Uh, so, academic students will be having a different class, and non academic will be having a different class? Right. And different professors? Different, uh, different teachers. The professors are not going to be teaching. Non academic will be regular, right? And uh, from them, from uh, they they will be taught by our our teachers, but the academy students most for the for the most part, uh, they will be they will be uh, taught by by the academy professors. And the curriculum will be the same. Curriculum, different. curriculum will, will be, be totally different. different. Yeah, yeah, different. yeah. It's it's going to be different. That's for sure. Question over here. Uh, by the time they are in college, RBCC, their class will be the same size, or they will have different students from the college. So too. we try to keep it in the beginning. Good question about we try to keep it in the beginning, um, just with the academy for like their first class, if we can. There are time constraints. We have to try. Um, our science building is like busting at the seams. We yeah. just expanded on it two years, and we're already lose, have no space. So we try to keep it to the 20, but as they go into 11th and 12th grade, there is a chance that they will be commingled. However, they would be commingled for the lecture portion, and I try my best to keep just the academy students in one lab section by themselves. So they had that collaborative opportunity during the lab, and the lecture is a typical lecture, max 40 students. So what would be the maximum size of that lecture? The max lecture is 40 students, 40 students, but the lab would be just the academy cohort. And then that, the my college students would be in another lab. So how does it going to help the students in college, right? So the people who wants to do more on the technology side, or what is the path? You know, I see only the computers in mm -hmm. the ninth grade. After that, you are not touching the computers at all. Right. So, right. Uh, how they're going to compete in the future world where everything is going through the computer. Well, that's where we have the opportunity to take other classes, extracurricular classes or summer classes or afternoon or evening classes if that's what you feel um, your student is interested in or needs for the strength. I'm going to be honest. 
Um, New Jersey is undergoing uh, legislation mm -hmm. just passed mm -hmm. where we're re revamping a lot of our academic programs and a lot of faculty are scrapping the technological courses because students know it all. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like it used to be 20 years ago mm -hmm. where you needed to take college courses in tech. Uh, he's actually talking about more advanced courses. Yeah, courses I, I understand in, 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 that. Yeah. So we, unless you go to, into a computer science yeah. or computer programming program, you're not going to get a, a Besides, I, I mentioned in our meeting on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I said that whatever major you go into, right. you might go into medical studies, okay. you might go into engineering, you might go into anything, you're going to always go back to environmental science and sustainability because that's where the future is. That's where the future is going. You know, in, in, in a regular uh, world that we lived to 10 years ago, everything was divided by the majors. But future is going for interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. So if he's interested in computers, or if she's con in interested in computers, like merging computers with environmental stu studies is gonna give him or her a great edge, a great disadvantage, a great advantage in the future. The other thing I think that uh, I, I don't think we mentioned it. There's just so much to mention about a program like this. But looking at college applications and when your students apply to college, if they have a program like this to say that they did an associate degree while they were in high school, is a real leg up. Mm -hmm. The colleges know the rigor and the type of schedule they, the students had to keep. And they also know that if they were working with RVCC college professors in a program like this, what that was like. So I think that that's something that we, we you know, neglected to say. And our advantage Getting uh, in. in this school yeah. is that the other academy, Votech Academy in, in Woodbridge, no, the Votech is, is in, in Somerset. Sum yeah, Summer Somerset. Sum Somerset, yeah, yeah. Or in Bridgewater. And then there's another Bridgewater. academy, a liberal arts academy in Somerville. So they've already graduated classes. I, I have visited the school. Uh, Joanne took me to that school, and I have met with the college counselors, with the curriculum supervisors, and everything. So during our meeting, uh, the college counselor said that we have already laid the foundation for. This program was something weird for the colleges in the past. Mm -hmm. But now they know, everybody knows. When, when they know that these kids are coming from the academy, mm -hmm. it's, it's the end of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So it, our kids are, are actually, you know, uh, are an advantage it right now, advantage. because especially for the college admissions, uh, because this program is right now really well known by the college admission counselors, especially the top colleges. And I've seen their college admissions uh, list. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and our kids are getting the same type of education by the same people, by the same organization. And, and I think it's a great opportunity for our kids. It's not something to be missed. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So quick question. Uh, how are the courses different from a normal public school, uh, uh, high school? We are going through the first time, so we don't know how uh, it works in a public school system. So the courses that are laid in 9, 10, 11, 12. How, well, how anything, I'll give you my answer, and then Marianne, you can answer. Anything that is in the high school, um, I think they're, they're all honors classes, and you know you can even add to that too, Robert. But the, the starred courses here, the courses that the students would be taking, um, with RVCC professors, um, those are college courses. Those are courses that are taught on our college campus. They're aligned with our college uh, courses, so they're getting the same course as um, what is taught on the RVCC campus. And as I said before, they go on a college transcript, so the students are amassing a complete college transcript for an associate degree in science. So you can't do that in a regular high school. Um, on the 10th grade um, fall and spring semesters, it's saying the US history, mm -hmm. um, that's also like college classes, mm -hmm. right? That's a college right. course. And would that be more advanced and more rigorous than yeah. AP US history? That's for sure. 
But what I do, what I usually do, uh, sometimes the students, they, they want to go further. This is what I do with my students. Actually, it's a great <laughs> question. So the first academic batch where Pragnia is studying. So I pulled Pragnia into my room the other day. I said, Pragnia, you are taking Bio 1 and Bio 2, and I'm registering you for AP Biology exam. So they are getting the education they need for the AP bio test. You know, more or less, it's gonna be the same thing. You're just gonna get one additional book, just read it like for, for a week, and then you're gonna be ready for the exam. If you're not satisfied with the course, if you wanna make sure that you, you want, you're gonna take the AP exam, you can go for it, and, and, and I advocate for that. DJ, the good part is US history itself doesn't change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. However advanced yeah. it may be, it is yeah. what had happened in the past yeah. that doesn't change. Yeah. True. I mean if you still want to go extra mile, you can go. You might have to but you know, in the US in well. the US education system, if we can if we will categorize the courses, it starts from the college level college prep level, then honors, then AP, and then college level courses. So college level courses are here. Why are you taking AP? Why, what is the reason of taking AP? What is it? Okay, answer. The main reason, yeah, there, are, there are two reasons. One, the colleges, they want to see that you are going through a rigorous curriculum. At the moment, the most rigorous uh, course available in the market is AP. In okay? the high school. In, in the high school. And then once you get a certain score, three and above, you don't have to take the AP, uh, you don't have to take the US history course in college. So you can credit that, you can transfer that, most of the time. But you are actually taking the actual credit course, actual, actual college level course. So logically, you don't really have to take AP. But if you still want to, I'm here to help. Right. <laughs> Good answer. Are these grades transferred in Great all questions. the colleges? Or okay. Just Great question. Questions? So, um, in New Jersey, we have transfer agreements. Okay. In this particular program, we also have transfer agreements outside of the state, with specific schools and colleges. Um, I don't know what your goal is for your child. Where would you like them to go to a four-year school? It really depends on the university, right? Any general education program at the associate's level should mostly transfer within New Jersey. I just got an email from uh, Joanne today, and I shared it with the uh, ninth grade and 10th grade academy parents. So there is this student who applied a seven year medical program at Drexel. It's very hard to get it. It's a very, very prestigious program. So in her email, she's mentioning that they credit everything in. That's great. Mm -hmm. Everything, they it's transcribed specific. everything. That's great. I have and a lot of she got 64 credits, but her 64 credits translated in as 90, 90 credits. Wow. Wow. Because Drexel has a different... Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They have trimester. So, they have, they have I think it's wonderful. Semesters. And, and it, you know, if you can transfer this to a seven-year medical program, yeah. I think it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. great. So yeah, so I have a lot of information on that because of the other academies that I've been involved with. And the credits are transferring. But it does depend on the school, as Marianne said, it does depend on the school that you're going to. Um, quite honestly, the Ivy League schools don't take credit transfers from really anywhere. anywhere. Um, Cornell seems to be like the most um, amenable to taking credits. but. Um, you, you, I have had, we have had very much success with our credits getting transferred. Um, and if they're not taking all of them, I've gotten a few emails, um, more, more emails today. I get emails, I ask the students, and over the years, I, I see the patterns, and really, it's been, it's been very good for the students. And from a college admission side, what's, what's gonna get you into the Ivy League schools? Right, is going to be that. these courses. It's going to be something like that, or even the whole pro the program as a whole. The program, right. no, it's, it's, yeah. it's the program, program as yeah. a whole. while being a high school student. Exactly, right. and 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 maybe in some cases the professor recommendation 
the professor writes you a recommendation and you're at the top of your class and you can get the a good recommendation. The college counselor that I visited uh, the other day at the Wotex school, so she said, I have, I have tried everything for these kids. So now I know the perfect recipe. So we sat down, we talked about all that recipe, you know, what I need to do for these kids to get into the good school. So we are not gonna re reinvent the wheel again. That's you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, now I know, the, I know the tricks, the things that we have to do, you know, even from recommendation letters. Mm -hmm. she, she was like, I wrote the recommendation letter initially in this format, which didn't work. I couldn't get any IV acceptances. But later on, I, I wrote the recommendation letters in this <laughs> format, then it was good. So, so they're, they're like our sister school right now. We are, we are very much in touch. And we are making use of their experiences. And I think our kids are gonna be very successful. We are gonna start, we are gonna start the game from their level. Um, since they are taking college level courses, do they get financial aid? No. God bless your pockets. <laughs> you, uh, no, high school students can't get financial aid while you're in high school. If you have a 529 though, I believe that 529 savings plan for college, I believe you can use that. So you might want to ask your financial advisor about that. But, but if you deplete that, I don't know what happens later on. <laughs> so, but I'm not a financial advisor, so. Any other questions? Mr. Yildiz, you, you see, you know, we are talking about financials, and Mr. Yildiz is gone. So. <laughs> okay. Will give us, All right, well, we want yeah, we to thank you so much thank for your you. interest thank you. Thank and you your so consideration. Much for thank you so much for coming. So if you have more questions, like you might, you might just leave and say, oh, I forgot to ask this. Just shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to help. When are you?